grew up in Soweto, lived a soft life, went to St. Stadiums, all that stuff, right? Okay. I want to get the juice, bro. I want to hear shit that no one has ever heard. Because if there's one guy I saw who's lived life, it's this guy, bro. Stories on 360, stories. bro. Dude. 180, you know, people, 180. 360, you, you end up at the same place. Oh, <laughs> yeah, 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 180. <laughs>and gentlemen welcome to a special edition of podcast and chill we're coming at you live from uh where's this place going rockets in uh, the Bryanston. rockets in Bryanston, eh? yeah it's the first time you've been here i had to bring him out just for you okay yeah, yeah you all right he doesn't frequent this side all right <laughs> dude i'm so excited you have no idea bro really i i, I came up from limpopo what was that what? was that shivenda you're speaking now Hinda. were you speaking to yeah and it's ah, no. i can't speak Venda, no. for real nah you never had it in any of ne? Uh, what was I mean? Utashkuma shosh laba is what the song, right? Stronger, yeah. yeah, you know, Venda. I mean, you know, to get straight into it, growing up in the hood, you know, Tsonga people, Vavenda people, used to get teased, right? <laughs> yes, we and, still do. <laughs> well, I think there's a little bit more respect now. Yeah. And and for me, it's such a disservice, especially using words as a as a currency, right? Yeah. Words, raps, and stuff like that. Not having been able to tap into that has been an absolute disservice because of biases and prejudices that uh, come from the hood you know um, so like i can't spend i can't understand any shivenda it's it's a, it's a travesty but what's crazy is that you're big in vendor <laughs> massive yeah. look yeah they love music and uh, i guess the rhythms uh, you know whatever language you're using spoke to the people we kind of resonated with people all over right yeah. yeah 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 so i was saying so i'm come up from vendor yeah come to joburg yeah, yeah get introduced to yfm <laughs> listening to the greats and like back then like you were like on every show top 40 you had all the biggest songs and to see you here and chat to you now is so surreal, dog. Because I literally grew up listening to you, bro. Yeah. It's fucking crazy. I guess that's how it happens, isn't it? Um, it's like uh, everything always comes full circle, mm. you know. Uh, as we were talking off air, you know, you guys have been lurking in the shadows. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hopefully learning from my mistakes, yeah. you know. And uh, looking what not to do, um, being inspired, yeah. and you know, here we find ourselves yeah. uh, today. You know, listen, your your story has been well documented. You've got a book. You've done a lot of interviews. <laughs> People knew. Okay, you grew up in Soweto, lived a soft life, went to St. Stadiums, all that stuff, right? Okay. I want to get the juice, bro. I want to hear shit that no one has ever heard. Because if there's one guy I saw who's lived life, it's this guy, bro. Stories on 360, stories. 360, bro. 180, you know, 180. 180. 360, you, you end up at the same place. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 180. <laughs> Geometry 101. Because here's my thing, right? There's a lot of people that are living, but have, aren't living life. You get what I'm saying? All right. I think you've lived life, dog. All right. Tell me, why the fuck were you carrying a baseball bat in your car? <laughs> Uh, you know, you don't do tracks like, but you know, but Tashkuma Shoshlabayo, and Zobizi Zinjazam, Yobiza Machita. Yeah. You don't, you don't sing songs like that and, and, and not back it up, mm. you know? Where I come from, you know, your word, word is born, yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, and yeah, I guess it came in a, you know, a time in my life where I felt I needed one, yeah. you know? Uh, it was getting quite real in the streets. Didn't you have security? Um, come here, Lord. Yeah, eventually I got security, but security at the time, it felt a little bit, a tad bit soft, you know? 
<laughs> so, uh, but yeah, my base, you know, my well documented baseball uh, uh, saga wasn't. It didn't last long, but it was a uh, was an interesting chapter. Did you ever use it? I used it. You kidding? For sure. On who? Nah, I can't say. Okay, but, but I used it twice. Eh. Okay, you can't say who, but why did you use it on them? How? Oh. Okay, the first story. I was with Mendoza. Mm. We went to a club in Ravonia, and then we walked in, and like for real, me and like Mdu we were like Fana Ashao Moya. We went to a club in Ravonia, and we we're just chilling. And as 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 fate would have it, we're just chilling. We're having drinks. You know, chicks from across the table saw us. You know, started winking and all of that stuff. And look, maybe we shouldn't have kind of entertained it, but we did. Mm. You know, and the guys that were with didn't kind of take too kindly to it. And you know, cut a long story short, the next thing we were in the parking lot, and you know, shoving back and forth. But the guy got a good one on me. You know, mm. and I'm like. I'm getting my baseball bat. <laughs> <laughs> He's just giving me the best excuse because he really he like he landed one good shot, you know. Um, Where's Mendoza? What's Mendoza? Mendoza's doing? running to get the car so that um, after I hit the baseball bat, we can get out of there. Sure. Yeah. But I think it's in hindsight, it's better as a bat instead of a gun, bro. For sure. Mm. I mean, hey, dude. Even as I, see, you know, we laugh, mm, you know. Mm, mm. Uh, but looking back on it, you know, uh, there's an injured human being. It could have been worse. Mm. I look back on my life with so much gratitude because I got myself into a lot, lots of trouble, man. And and I thank God that it didn't, you know, as. It didn't become, you know, like an Oscar Pistorius or, or, or a Jupe Jupe yeah, piece where people lost yeah, their lives. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, it could have. Easily. It could have. Yeah. And, and hence, you know, talking about Jupe Jupe and, and Oscar, you know, not condoning whatever happened, but like my heart went out to them because mm. I saw me. I did. I, I saw me. I was like, I was there. I could have hit the guy with the baseball bat on the head. The guy could have been dead, mm. you know? Um, so yeah, my heart did go out to those two when that happened, and I'm just really grateful to God that we can, you know, look back, laugh, you know, uh, and there's no kind of serious repercussions, you know. Is it true that you beat up a woman, and then another woman you poured like a bottle of water on her and stuff like that? <laughs> I remember pouring. Yeah, yeah, it was in a club. I remember pouring, uh, uh, I think it was water. Yeah. Uh, whatever it was, yeah. I can't remember. Yeah. But yeah, we were crazy, man. We were crazy. Right. And let me not say we, I, because I got to take responsibility mm, for my mm, own thing, mm, you know. Mm. Um, I did pour water over a woman in a club. Um, yeah. Fucking hell. Have you spoken to that woman? The woman that I poured the water over? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's actually... Um, She's actually, a, I would say, a good friend. Yeah. And she reminds me a lot about it in that, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that about that. And then yeah. is it the same woman that you beat up or that's no, another woman? No, no. So, you know, this issue, how do I tackle this one? I guess to answer your question, no, it's not yeah. the same woman. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. But what happened with that, with that situation? That situation... I always say, you know what, it's not my story to tell. Mm. You see, um, because I've got to respect, um, I've got to respect the survivor, right? Mm. Mm. Uh, but I take full responsibility for my, you know, you know, shameful, you know, cowardly behavior, mm. you mm. know? Um, and out of, out of respect, you know, for, for the survivor, um, I'd say, yeah, it's not my story to tell, but... You know, as you've mentioned, it's not something that I've shied away from talking about. I've written about it in my book. Mm. I've tried to make amends, yeah. you know, with regards to kind of how I've moved on, you know, from, from, from that in terms of how I live life uh, now. Uh, but yeah, it's not my story to tell, but I, 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 I take full responsibility for it. Isn't it crazy how those things happen now? Dude, you'd be cancelled. Wouldn't be sitting here. Wouldn't even touch you. Yeah, he's radioactive. He'd be radioactive <laughs> <laughs> and inactive on the radio. Yeah. <laughs> hey, and that's just two incidents that you've told us. Imagine all the other shit that we don't know, bro. Sure. Yeah. Look, I mean, yeah, it was a it was a crazy time. Um, How crazy were you, bro? No, sir. 
Yeah, look, I mean, insecure. You hey. know, didn't know whether I was coming or going. Mm. And you're uh, young, bro. Yeah, look, it's no excuse, you know. But uh, I think it's no excuse. But I think the most important thing is for us to really grapple with our issues, because the the sooner we grapple with our issues, the sooner we deal with our issues. Um, we, we we stand a better chance of not perpetuating the nonsense. What do you think your issues were? I had my own issues, bro. Um, was it your father? Your relationship with your father? Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Was, yeah, definitely. My relationship with my dad was quite a volatile one. But I'm very proud to say that, you know, before my dad died, um, he saw the new man. Yeah, yeah. He saw he saw me getting on the other side of, you know, the issues I was dealing with, right? Uh, but my, the point I was trying to make is, it's it's very important for all of us, you know, to really face those demons because when we do face those demons we stand a better chance of not perpetuating the nonsense and people don't get hurt in the process you know yeah mm. so how was your relationship with your dad like um i said it was volatile man you know my dad and let, let me let me let me let me <laughs> let me set it up like this yeah. uh, my heart goes out to that generation okay that generation uh had their backs up against the wall yeah yeah uh so much turmoil so much mm. right and i don't even think they had the wherewithal to be able to communicate with us show affection or whatever it was right they didn't know how to i don't think they did yeah right uh, but then i didn't know it's something that i know now you know you're a parent now I yourself, know, yeah. yeah and i guess having worked having made the mistake of laying a hand on a woman mm. you know because i saw my dad do it mm. right and then you kind of identify yeah. you know and, and it becomes a norm well shouldn't be a norm but you you identify then you're like flip you know what i hated about somebody you know i'm now that person kind of you know what's going on mm. you know so my relationship with my dad yeah i guess my dad was an alcoholic unfortunately yeah you know and um yeah i guess you know very volatile relationship with with my mom and yeah being a firstborn son and being quite defensive over you know my mom you know caused a lot of friction yeah. you know with uh, with my dad yeah but he also had a good part to play because massive between, between him and your mother the vinyls they used to play in the house nah, I mean, my, you know? yeah look my dad like honestly there's no absolutely no beef at all now i i i take i take i take him with his warts and all you yeah. know because all of, all of him you know um created the man i am yes. today you know what i'm saying 100%. so yeah i mean the vinyls you know music was a massive part that he imparted in my life respect and uh and and hard work you know mm. the principle of hard work my dad always instilled that in me that you always got to work hard bro you know? what what were they doing how did they afford to get you into cestidians bro so <laughs> my folks you know we tapped into kind of some scholarship funds with where my dad was working oh my dad worked at liberty life you know tapped into some scholarships there my mom was a teacher so um you know through being a teacher and under, you know maybe and not maybe kind of understanding where the pockets of funding lay mm. you know uh got me to uh saint stithians but they but they footed most of the bill and even today as i think about it i don't know i don't know how they did it man. yeah it's, it's remarkable i don't know how i they mean did it's it. great to go to saint stithians now imagine I mean, 50 I 100 years I ago i, I mean, don't know how they did i mean i look at me <laughs> 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 I don't I don't know how they did it man. I mean I, I asked my mom today and I'm like how do you do it? I look at my kids. I got two kids paying school fees and yeah. all of the rest of it, you know. We've got a double income household, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And it's still not and easy. And it's like cheese we, you know, we're still trusting God for uh uh um you know to get us through, right? Yeah, yeah. And then you think of Ah, kind of the kind of money they were bringing home what they were paying at saints it was oh. all god brother you know yeah. it was all god's grace i think that that really got us through you know let's talk about the music man <laughs> uh, tkz who was the beyonce who was the michelle <laughs> i said tukulo was the beyonce tukulo was the beyonce yes. i was the michelle for sure no way yes. Yes. Yeah. Love. Yeah, yeah 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 and why yeah, what was yeah, he yeah. doing <laughs> so i was the kelly then i don't know <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> because from from the way i see it right correct me if i'm wrong i think zwai came with the musical experience and knowledge you know let's set the record look okay maybe finish your thought uh you came with the you came with the 
soft life, I'm in the north vibe. And then Tukula was like for the people, like gangster in the hood, in the trenches with the people. That's, I don't know, I could be nah, wrong. Rubbish. All <laughs> of us, all of us, all of us. Take anyone out of TKZ, there's no TKZ. Yeah. There's no one who was more special or anyone who was more talented or whatever. Everybody came with what they had and that's why it's you know still the biggest Kwaito group in the country yeah you know so whenever I hear people go yeah because this one was that and I'm like whatever man but you but Zwai was the musical genius bro <sighs> didn't he isn't he the one who said you must add on uh, the song with Benny the, the violence Shibobo yeah. Tukulo came up with that you, you see you guys pick up your things in the street <laughs> you see what I'm saying you kidding okay. Who came up with the idea to sample uh, Final Countdown? Tukulo. That was genius, That's man. That's For real. Wow. Hey. And, there's a, lot, and there's a lot of those Zwai. stories. I'm thinking it's Zwai. You guys along. always just see, you know, what you hear. And like, you guys don't even know the half of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so where did the idea start? With the sample or the Shibobo Both of idea? them were sitting in, in, in Hard Rock Cafe in Rosebank. I was in there. Final Countdown came on the speakers Tukulo was like we've got a sample that that's the song because we were kind of workshopping a track for uh, the Bafana Bafana World Cup 98 yeah oh. yeah and um, yeah I guess you know that was the idea I came when it was cooking already mm. you know I came to studio the strings were laid down and uh, but I knew we had something special you know? uh, before we talk about the song the, yeah. the Benny McCarthy song man yeah? How dope was was Tukula, bro? Because till this day, too I dope, think, bro. Too dope. Nah, oh, he doesn't man. get his flowers, though. No, no. he doesn't, oh, dude. Bro, like for real, like there's the Makesh before the car accident, and the Makesh before the car, be, be after, after the car accident, mm. and I don't know, we lost something in that car accident. Shit, man. I don't want to lie. Mm. That like outside of the car accident. You, you don't mess with my cash mm. on the mic mm. like I always knew my place mm. you know I always knew my place and it was just sitting in the pocket learning learn like I learned from the best I walked with the best to ever do it in this country for real for real for real sure I, 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 I yeah I mean I, I've seen that guy do things that yeah. you know I mean I was there for all of it right mm. I mm. saw it <laughs> Sure. Makesh doesn't get enough of his flowers, man. What does he? For real. What would he do? Like, does he write on the spot? Does he freestyle? Everything. Sure. Everything. Everything. Now, Makesh is the business, man. For real, for real. He's the guy that put me on. You know, he's the guy that believed in me. You know that. Uh, in fact, we started a group. <laughs> Instead, it eight. Two. Uh, it was called two. Two slice. Two slice. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we started a group, and uh, yeah. It always inspired me. Shit, man, that's amazing, bro. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let's go to the Benny McCarthy song. Yeah, yeah. How did that come about? Because I know you had to fly to, or oh, Zoya had to fly to. So the Benny thing, one of the guys we worked with at BMG, Lance McCormack, knew Benny's manager, who was flap. I forget his name. Anyway. Uh, Benny Star was on the rise. He had just finished playing for Seven Stars here. Yes, yes. And he was on the way to IX, right? So he wasn't the, the, the Jose Mourinho Benny. You yes, know? yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I think if it was the Jose Mourinho Benny, we wouldn't have gotten, yeah. we wouldn't have gotten him, you <laughs> did know? You, did you even pay for him for, to be on the track? I don't think so. Wow. I, I don't yeah. think so. I don't think so. Yeah. Rob Moore, I think that was Benny's manager, yeah. Rob Moore. Yeah. Um, yeah, and they, we were going to Bafana Bafana. Benny was, you know, then and is now a prolific goal scorer. So Bafana reached out to you guys to make a song. No, 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 no. We we kind of, you know, after Palafala, felt, you know, that we need to do a song for the World Cup. Oh, independent of okay. anybody asking for anything, oh, you know. Um, and then we reached out to Benny, Rob Moore. He was keen, and. Um, yeah, I remember the day they said, yeah, Benny's, like, Benny's on, mm. you know, because we had done the track. Mm. The track was done. And uh, Zwai had to fly to the, you know, to, to the Netherlands the next day. And I remember having to meet Zwai and Tukula at the studio. We literally, Tukula and I wrote Benny's verse in five minutes. Yeah. Because it had to be simple, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you listen like a, to like the verse, and chips. it's, like, it's yeah. like, it's simple. You know, because you, you got to factor the fact 
that you know and we're do you dealing know where with the a soccer player. The the lekker lekker fish and chips comes from. It's an old eighties track. Yeah. Oh. She don't like the buravos. Yeah. She says too dick. <laughs> hey lekker lekker fish and chips. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, like a, like a fish and chips. <laughs> it's not all right. <laughs> yeah. That was genius, dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw in the video, you guys went in the Netherlands. Only Zwei we're, was. Yeah, yeah. We were in the old, old Orlando Stadium. Yeah. yeah so Zwei flew over, did vocals, came back. And then we still needed to shoot the cover. There's the you know, there's the cover story when then Baf- Benny's back. Yeah. Um, training with Bafana. Bafana's like, you can't come here. It's training, you know. We were like, Rob, we're coming to shoot the cover. Yeah. We've got a jacket. If you remember, we're wearing like these jackets. And then um, uh, uh, Penny, they, they, they had like a, not a half time, but they had a break in between yeah. training. Yes. And in between training, he came, we stood next to a wall. <laughs> <laughs> and that and was it. And that was it. the cover. That was it. Oh, wow. That was it. I read on Sowetan that your first gig... As TKZ, you guys got paid 2,000 rands. Six grand. Six grand. Split it two ways, two grand each. It was a constant 500 in Durban in June mm. of 96. 96, listen to that, bro. Mm. I blew my two grand all in one day. What did you do? I bought a Tommy Hilfiger jacket and replay jeans, I think. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You still got those? Nah. Bro, who could sell those on eBay? Man? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, auction them. <laughs> And then at the height of your guys' career, how much were you guys making, like, per gig? Jeez, man. How about 50 to 100 grand? <laughs> Hundreds? No. In the 90s? No. No way. Yeah. Booga love. No. Yep. No That's us. They had a tax problem. No <laughs> 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 yeah, sure. the tax problem, man. Eh? And promoters Look. were paying that? Yeah, promoters were paying that. I mean, if you think about it, you know, if you go back then, there's n- there's not much we're competing with. Mm. That's why CD sales and physical sales are through the roof. Because we're not competing with much. We're not competing with data. We're not competing Shit, let's with... Let's check how much you're making on CD sales. We're not bro. competing with... Streaming. Hardware, streams. Yeah, it's like that's all you get. It's either you're going to get them on CD or you're going to get them on... 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 On, on stage, right? Mm. Yeah. Typical album, how many units would you guys sell? 250? 250,000 yeah. units, right? How much is one CD? About 89 rand. 89 rand. But that's let's not just, us, right? Yeah, let's just make it 90 rand. 22 million. That's the record Fuck company. Re- yeah. That's the record company. Because mm-hmm. they signed, remember? Yeah, we were artists. How much were you getting from we, that? We weren't smart. How well, much whatever 15% of that is. <laughs> Please. Less advances. Yeah. Yo, 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 yo. Times by 0.15%. 3 mil. Divided by 3. That's not a lot. Ooh, 1 mil each. That's not a lot. From it's 22. It's not, it's, not it's not a lot. Damn. Hey, can we go back in time, dog? I could have been your manager. You know, you know, I, I, I want to say something just to encourage just all of you, you know, because I think there's a kind of fear that we bought into. And I mean, I'll speak for myself again, you know, uh, where people will kind of make you feel as if you won't be able to kind of handle, you know, the pressures that come with um, stepping out on your own, you know. Granted, there's, there's levels, you know, you can, do, you can be an artist, you can then move over to maybe sign a licensing deal. And this is obviously assuming that you're making money in the process, you know, along that kind of continuum to be able to get to a place where you then, uh, you know, doing a distribution deal, right? But people then made us feel as if, you know what, you need us. Mm. You can't do this without us. You know, and, and, I, and I bought into that lie and it's, and it's absolute rubbish because who's got the goods? Yeah, you do. We've got the goods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's buying? We are. We've got the goods. You know, infrastructure and all of that stuff, I guess you, you, you can figure it out, right? Mm. And maybe the fear is, what if I stuff it up, you know? But I just want to encourage someone to say, you know what? Take a leap of faith, man. Mm. You know, and, and what's encouraging is there's people who've come after us mm. who've taken the bull by the horns. And they're reaping the And rewards. they've done it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they've done it, which, yeah. is, which is encouraging, you know? Did you guys, like, ever perform overseas uh, during that Yeah, time? plenty. Yeah? yeah, where, did yeah. You guys, where did you guys rock? Oh, jeez. Denmark, London, Denmark. Atlanta, Dallas. 
This is oh. the night before social media. You couldn't even snap that you. <laughs> oh, this is crazy. Now we performed overseas a lot, African continent. Yeah, man. And how was the reception? Mm. Would people like know your song? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I mean, we performed to what the diaspora, right? Diaspora, yeah. You know, um, but yeah, great experience. And why would you say they wanted you guys back then? Who? The guys overseas. I mean, it's diaspora. It's South people, Africans. It's people. It's South Africans, Namibians, Zimbabwe. Oh, diaspora is South Africans. Yeah, well, yeah, from here overseas. Oh, why yeah. are they called diasporas? I don't oh, know. It's the word. I, that's it's just the that's, word. That's the yeah, word. Like that's Nigerian used. diaspora is all over the world. <laughs> South African yeah. diaspora in London. <laughs> hey, get it out. Now it's English class. <laughs> Welcome to Saint Stephen. <laughs> <Man. laughs> okay, yeah. I guess that's why. Yeah. I so, yeah. I guess that answers your question, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. What cars? What cars were you buying at the time? <laughs> Mac G feels like <laughs> those kids that you like see at the show. You know, Valete <laughs> Ovang but you know those kids you like dude no come on man and they take like crazy like what man you nailed it dude <laughs> ah, dude we had cars man I mean jeez <laughs> okay tell me about your favorite one the one that you like the my most. favorite yeah Ah, the M Coupe, I guess. You know, I had a nice Z M Coupe, a black one. You know, yeah, yeah man. Yeah. When I was a lighty, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah. does Palafala mean? Palafala, I don't know. We need to ask my cash. Mm. Um, but Palafala, tina la poscon, la Palafala. You know, Palafala is either ki pala or there's a noise or tap, tap. you know there's a party. You know, or oh, like tap tap, ne? What's that now? Palafala. <laughs> Man, they weren't just saying stevians, they were eating falafels. <laughs> oh. That's where it comes from. <laughs> no, palafal, I guess it, 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 there's a literal, I think palafal is actually like pala, yeah, you know? Yeah. But I think figuratively, it could be like Tina Lapos Corner. That's where it goes it, down. It's, yeah. Uh, it's happening. Yeah. Noisy. Yeah. It's, uh, there's vibes. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Tell me about Mambochi, because I think it's got one of the best ad libs, like, ever, you know? A good thing. Classic. That song is just filled with ad libs, bro. Pulai, pulai. Um. Yeah, I guess what what was I saying? Akutu, akutu, pulai. Yeah, I mean we were just full of it then, man. You know, full of it in a sense that, um, yeah, it's like akutu, man. We couldn't. We, I can't hear you, man. We yeah. are just the business, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pulai, then you yeah. know if you can't take it, you know. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, Halloween. Wow, jeez. You were high at that time, time. Eh? when you did Halloween. Eh? Big time, yeah. yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and people say I always read on social media. Yeah, but le, since you get a matrix, I got a science and my heat. You know how people are, dog. You know my biggest, my biggest album ever, solo. Yeah, I was clean. Wow. And oh, people really? don't know that. Which one was that? And the beat goes on. Ah, that was my first clean album. Which one did it have? That's the one I love. That's like the best. Yeah. That's the best, dog. Yeah. Is that yeah. the, it's my house. That was the one before. Oh, I was high there. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, that's dope, bro. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, the myth that you need, I mean, Tubula was clean, you know? The myth that you need drugs to make music. I used to believe that, mm. you know? I mean, I think back to a time where I was about to work with him, do, about to do a year, yeah. Mm. And Mdu's this flipping giant, yeah, right? Yeah. Mega star. Mega star. He said, yes, come to my studio, you know. And I remember I was trying to stay clean. I think I was six months clean. Mm. Was he on drugs? I don't know. Mm. <laughs> um, he's now he's disturbing. <laughs> I was going to the guy's house. And I guess insecurities again, you know, very the insecurities that I struggled with a lot as a young man. Mm. And I had to get high to go work with them, do you know? Shit. But thank God we created IA, right? Mm, yeah, yeah. Mm, mm. Yeah, yeah. So that's when you relapsed, eh? no? I've never relapsed for real, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you just said you were six months, well, I guess, yeah. Then I'm saying post 
when I went to rehab. Yeah, yeah. yeah. To kind of we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. I want to talk about the songs, man. Okay. Because your catalog, there's so much. You okay, know? cool. So I just want to talk about the ones that I really like. It's my house. How did that come about? It's my house was actually in Togozo. Do you guys remember in Togozo? Round and round, round and round, babe. Yeah, remember yes, Togozo? Yes, yes, yes. She later dated. I remember her. <laughs> uh, she later dated him Sawa or something like that. I remember. I can't that. remember. I remember blonde hair. Wow, she changes her hair. Yeah, like, I remember yeah, yeah. her. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Mindla had that bass line for her actually. Is it? Yeah, and I heard it. I was like, guys, begin. No, dude. Let hang I eh, eh, eh. Mm. And then he gave me the track. Tuli Tilly's, my late homie Tuli Tilly's wrote that hook. For as long as I pay for more. Hey, so shall I go. Wrote that before he died. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We recorded the track. Like weeks later, he died. Wow. Um, so, yeah, what was the question about the track again? How did it come about? That's it. Yeah, you're oh, yeah, it. That's, yeah, that's the vibe. Yeah, I love that. It's track, a Mandra, man. Mandra, Bruce, Bruce Wheatley combination. Is that uh, sample? It's my house. Yeah, yeah. It's on one of the hardware. What do you call those things? Uh, what do you call those things? The programs like that you use. Yeah, like software. Oh, you software, know, now it's like software. Like, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Those, it's it's yeah. on one of those kind of things. Oh. Yeah, sample packs. So, 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 yeah. yeah, sample pack. Yeah, exactly that. So before Fruity Loops and how how were you guys recording? Like analog. Our first album was analog. We recorded on tape. You kidding? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We recorded on tape, and if you made a mistake, they had to like cut the tape and put it together again. Our first album was on tape, and then we went digital from from there. So on. when you say on tape, what do you mean? Like I don't understand. Reels. So when you're recording, the tape's recording. You know the reels, those like big, the big, those the big, big ones. Reels? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then when you fuck up, you gotta go back. Yeah, the guy, the engineer. Yeah. Yeah, he's gotta do the things. And then the final. So now, now, I mean digital. Yeah. I mean, like when you guys edit sound. Yeah. You you know you just literally chop it up. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that chopping was a guy doing that to tape. And then what we heard when it's the final product was the full version that was cut up. 100%. Shit, man. On tape. Yeah. I mean, that's genius from an engineer perspective. I don't know how those guys do that, you know? Yeah. We were just all about the, what you might call, the making the music, right? Uh, and I hear in your, all your songs, like you use a lot of samples. I know your uh, Reves Wim Yeah. That was inspired by Biggie, ne? So Reves Wim Slava is actually a, 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 a Tukulo's original line. Spete abo lady shade of ganja and show. Abandon about my swing shwa. Eh, abandon about petama kev zom slaba. Now my reverse swam slaba, man. That's our first album. Yeah, yeah. Kulo did that. Okay. Then I heard the biggie track. Mm. Can I get with you? Sure, Can yeah, I get? Because yeah. why you want to get, get with me? Because you got. I was like, okay, you've got. We got. You got a big BUT. We've got reverse swam slaba. <laughs> Asambe. Asambe. Ah. <laughs> that was genius, bro. Yeah, and it's funny how it just landed together like that, you know? Mm. Uh, but anyway. Another track I like, Zonke. Mm -hmm. I feel like you're just spilling your heart out on that track, man. Yeah, man, Zonke was at a, was at a good time in my life, man. Mm. You know, I'd kind of beaten my demons clean, new lease on life, you know? Um, and, 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 and making making music is a spiritual, it's actually a spiritual, uh, yeah, yeah. it's actually a spiritual experience, yeah. you know, a process. Mm. And uh, where I was at, man, it's just, uh, nothing was impossible. And uh, you can hear it in the music, right? It mm. mm. um, was a very special time, yeah. Goofy, I mean, yeah, goofy on the, on the beat, mm. you know, classic. Uh, Bantula for Life, do you want to talk about that one? Do you want to talk about yeah, that? Yeah, man, I like that I've spoken one. about it a number of times. What have you said? I haven't heard anything you've said about it. <laughs> I'm saying over the years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. What have you said? What I'm about to say okay. now. <laughs> okay. um, well, I guess maybe what's, what's, what's really cool about that track, what I enjoy about that track is... It, it was my first solo project, right? Coming okay. out of TKZ, ne? Yeah. And then there's this kind of notion that TKZ is kind of a, a law unto its own in its own planet. And we didn't kind of, and we didn't really kind of Conform. socialize with the rest of the, the, the industry, you okay. know? But we were so inspired by the rest of the industry. I mean, any given time, I was playing Trompies, I was playing MM Deluxe, I was playing Do, yeah. I was playing everybody, you yeah. know, because... First, you kind of need to obviously know what everyone's doing. 
but you know the good ones really stood out you know so, and yeah. Mandela's Pikiri and not even then I'm talking about early 90s 92 93 mm. Mandela's Pikiri you know we used to play Koti Proof mm. when we were still part of MM Deluxe with uh, uh, M2 mm. so Mandela was always yeah. like I was always a massive Mandela fan did and I show it was underground that time mm. I could say, yeah, mm. well, 92, 93, yeah. 100%. No one even knew what it was. Exactly. Right? It was just all instrumentals. So going out and doing a solo project and actually going, actually, I'm going to call this guy. Okay. You know, I called him. And to date, he'll tell you, he didn't expect that call. Mm. You know, everyone at Galawa was shocked. Uh, but we did the track, I'd say about half an hour. Wow. Yeah. We didn't because I knew exactly what I wanted. There's a there's a sample that they had used on one track, and I said I want that sample. We got to use that sample. So from a beat perspective, the the beat was already done, which is the beat you've come to know. Yeah. And then he just lays the bass and the and the keys, and I'd already written the lyrics. Yeah. So that's why it was quite a quick experience. And back then, when you guys were recording, are there like girls, booze? Nah. In the studio? I mean, that's just, that's, that's just a fallacy. I mean. Maybe if it happened throughout my whole career where the whole booze and chicks and yeah. whatever, ah, maybe five, ten times. Oh, okay. But 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 more often than not, the guys are actually quite professional about yeah. what they do yeah. and take it quite seriously. Yeah. But it's, if it so happens to, you know, if you so happen to be making music on a Friday, mm. it's one of those things. It's one of those things. We're hanging yeah. out in the studio, Tukulos chick comes, yeah. Rise chick, the chicks are there, yeah. you know, and... But they're your girlfriends, they're there. Yeah. You know, you're boozing up and you're making music. We're well, recording you know? there, Kalawa, here by. <coughs> well, you know, in Woodmead or whatever. Yeah, Woodmead. Kelo Manor. Yeah, Kelo yeah, Manor. Yeah, 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 I've yeah, been Kelo in the studio Manor. station yeah, yeah, yeah. there. It's, it's, it's remarkable, eh? Kelo Manor. It's amazing how yeah, these guys work. There's man. amazing energy there. Yeah. I really love that studio. Uh, before I tell you about my favorite track that you've done, what's your favorite track? Um, I must only say Amasheling. I don't even know that one. Yeah, it's on my first album. Uh, produced by Moses Mlelekwa and myself. Um, Tuli Tilis is on it, right? No, no, no. Oh, okay. It's just me and Moses. Mm-hmm. Um, how does it go again? He wants mm. everything nice. That oh, track. is that, oh, is that my shilling? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. he wants everything nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He can tell you the yeah. price. Yeah, that's the oh, one. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. He is really like that guy, Kosho. <laughs> <laughs> eh? Eh? Like full on, full on, full on. <laughs> Ah, me, Big G, you killing me, man. You like full on. I mean, every time you speak, I see myself backstage, go passing, and there's literally this kid by like the the window. Hey, hey, shout at me! Yo, yo, and then, you know he's like small. You know, like oh yeah, I like that turkey flat. And he doesn't want to go. <laughs> and you don't want to chase him away because you can see this kid is like flip, you know? Shatter him. Yeah, you just shatter him, you know? <laughs> okay, last song, last song, last song. <laughs> Favorite song from you for me has to be on the end of fire. Okay. Ah, but that's mindless I'm, that's mindless speaking song. Is it? Yeah, it's mindless speaking okay. song. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that obviously comes with you working with him. Man. For sure. Yeah, fuck, I love that song, bro. Track is dope, eh? Yo. <laughs> It's a classic, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay, all right. Let's go to the demons. <laughs> Let's go to the demons. Tell me about your first line, bro. First line? Yeah. Of remember? Coke? Yeah. Damn. Remember it? Yeah. Look <laughs> near. <laughs> what else did I expect coming here? You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, damn, you know? I thought maybe they'll be in a good mood today and just give me a free pass, you know? Have you heard, <laughs> have you heard Scott Stodge? The Who? first time he tried his first line. Who? Scott Stotch, the Who, producer. Who's that? He produced still Dre. All right. He's like a big producer. He's got okay. massive songs. So he was trying to smash Paris Hilton. And she was doing coke. So they go to the bathroom. And she said he must sniff it from her ass. Damn. And he's trying to smash. So what is he going to do? <whistles> sniffed. No ways. And the rest was history. No ways. Yeah. My Did you sniff? Time. You sniffed? From someone says no, no, no. Okay. No. <laughs> it wasn't a crackhead. <laughs> <laughs> My first time was um we we're actually at a party, it was myself, my gash, and Tuli Tilis. And uh um yeah, this one friend of ours. You know when you you don't know 
you, you, you're kind of just going about your business, right? Yeah. yeah. And you always hear about this thing. And kind of the way it showed up was like, flip, there it was, you know? First time you see it. Yeah, I was like, wow, here's this thing. And then the bravado kicks in. Ah, he sends the next. Let's do it. <laughs> you know yeah. but the insecurities obviously you know uh, are always covered up by this kind of larger than life persona you know and uh, yeah it was at a party so it's like one of these northern suburbs took my first line does Lance bring it to you who's Lance Lance Sturr. no ok I'm just making sure <laughs> swan this swan swan <laughs> no <laughs> so <laughs> So, yeah, that was my first experience. I thought it wasn't going to amount to anything because, ah, I'm funny. Why would I do for that? Why it's an ex, you know? Mm. And then, uh, and that's, yeah, that's how it catches. It was given to me for free for the first couple of times. And then kind of when I understood the high, I was like, okay, this is what this is about. Yeah. And I got hooked. How, how, how does it feel, man? I've never taken I'm so scared, bro. Yeah, I'd rather so scared, stay away man. from it. There's a 2% recovery rate. Sure. You know, 2%. Two percent. So I, and you, I, what are the two percent? I'm the two percent. Wow. So I'm very fortunate, you know, uh, blessed by God to live to tell the tale. Uh, but there's a two percent recovery rate, and 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 don't don't start because you might not be as lucky as me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know I'm, what I'm I've saying? I've got a very addictive personality. Yeah. Man. You know, don't start because you might not be uh, 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 as lucky as me. Um, you asked me how it was. Jeez, I guess. Um, yeah, because you're already larger than life. Makes you, yeah, I was going to use that term. It yeah. really makes you feel like unstoppable. I heard it's an know? ego drug. Yeah, yeah, it feeds your ego. Yeah, you know, first um, like, and, and 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 it's it's kind of the the it preys on the most insecure. Oh, <laughs> shit. that's the flip. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you're dependent on it. Hundred percent, because then you can't be. That person outside of right, yeah. Yeah, which is a lie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, which is a lie. Which is a lie. Because I know you, uh, when I read your book, you said you were six months away from doing heroin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at the height of your 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 binging, how much yeah. were you consuming? Like a day a week? Oh, jeez, man, you're taking me back twenty years, man. Yeah. Um, ah, man, jeez, four or five grams a day, <sighs> easy. How big is the grams? A gram is a gram. Like. I don't know these things. I don't know too, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, of, I know big gram, is a gram. gram. And I, I've got an idea. So go, go. Gram is when tiny, you, so when you get home, it's a lot of yeah. Yeah. Go measure what a gram looks like. Yeah. Times it by five. Shit. Yeah. How much were you spending on that a month? Well, what was that? Five hundred a pop per gram. And how, and how many pops a day? Five. Four, five, four. Shucks. Two point five. And that's just yeah, yeah. But that's yeah. a day. It chows it. Yeah. It. Ch- it it messes you up financially. How much do you think you, you had spent, like, in total? Like, two bar? Two bar. Oh! That's the calculation. Yeah. When I, when I go back, it's easily two million ran up my nose. And was, like, everyone doing it at the time? Like, is it a cool thing or was just... Nah, I mean, few? it was a select few. This is the 90s, yeah, right? Yeah, we don't even know what like, it looks this like. This is... Yeah. It's very niche. Mm, mm. You know, it hasn't hit mass market, mm. you know? And it was perceived to be, like, for white people. I'd say, yeah, I'd yeah. say so, maybe, I don't know, mm. I guess, that and ecstasy, you know, mm. um, but yeah, I, I don't know where it's at right now, but uh, by the sound of things, it seems quite prevalent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like, you're not cool if you're not doing it. No. Okay. Yeah. Like, right. same thing back then, right? Yeah. Mm. And then ecstasy, is that the same as well? Ecstasy is just kind of a, a pill that, hallucinogen. Mm. Oh. <laughs> That's the vibe. That sounds yeah. fun, though. We do. Well, we made we, lo- we love this place. <laughs> <laughs> we made we love this place. Oh, so for real? Oh, you're in the place. We were like, oh, 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 now it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> no, we really love this oh, place. Oh, love. <laughs> <laughs> Such a wholesome song. <laughs> that is a drug song. <laughs> yeah, we were we were. Because we I got some friends, right? They were doing mushrooms. And before they did them, because I don't do that shit, they kicked me out. They're like, yo, we're going to fuck up with our high. Yeah, Because yeah. they go in some place. Yeah, yeah it's hectic. Yeah. yeah. Shit, man. It's hectic. Fucking hell. And girls, who are you smashing at the time? <laughs> Must have been a lot, bro. Ah, but you know, it's like, 
uh, how do I say this? I, I, we shouldn't be talking about that kind Why of stuff. Why not? Nah, man, who cares? Bro, I care, bro. Yeah, yeah, man. I wanna like, know. What are you talking about? I wanna know. It's like, no, man. Hey? Uh-huh. No, man. Okay, what, what type of girls were you into back then? Like North girls, hood rats, what are we dealing with? Ah, true. I mean, our chako ka sneaky nga nga di cherry didn't matter really, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It didn't matter. So you didn't have looks? You, you grew up in the hood, you always like pretty girls, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it, it, I'm, I'm no different to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, any, any one of you, right? Yeah. But your hit list must have been yeah. crazy. Buga <laughs> love. Ah, must oh. have been crazy. <laughs> Somke! <laughs> Mr. Reverse from Slava. Yeah. <laughs> what do you say? Why you humble now? But surely you remember, like, some of the girls that you were with, no? Yeah, you can't forget. I mean, these were people that were in your life, right? Yeah, you you can't yeah, forget. Yeah, some yeah. some maybe yeah, maybe some you do forget, but some you don't forget, right? That, like 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 normal men, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is not like a foreign concept <laughs> where you date. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Any famous girls? No famous girls. Ah, I'm fancy. Yeah. When a man just so funny, we're not sure how to do it. Ne, take no ni casa. He did it no nikasa. I think so. Yeah. Who got love? One nigga. Oh, everybody knows this man. Yeah, okay. I mean it's like. You know. <laughs> okay, let's talk about the girl who broke your heart at Sacred Hearts. Yeah. Yeah. What does she do? I don't know what she does. I don't know where she is. I no, think no. What I did she do the other day? Oh, what did she do? Yeah. Ah, dude, I was in standard six, man. Mm. You know, mm. and um, I think she didn't want to kiss me. <laughs> you know, I think I got into that place where. I, f- I felt like no it's time we kiss you know mm. and uh, she wasn't feeling me man you for know real. yeah I think she, I think we only dated for like two weeks mm. and she told me to jump mm. and it was heartbreaking man bro you didn't stand at six Jeez, bro like, you can't deal with that I had to leave the school yeah yeah <laughs> that's how bad it was <laughs> <laughs> my mom saw she's like hey it's not gonna last this one <laughs> Hux, boy school no more girls <laughs> save my life yeah yeah for sure and you haven't seen her since. You know, dog, I think I did, eh? Yeah. I think I was running the one time and I ran past it, but I'm not sure if it was her. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's talk about rehab, bro. First time you go to rehab, because when I was interviewing Trevor Gumby, he told me, it's crazy, man. They locked him up in a room and he had a ball and he had to tell the ball, move, stop, don't move, to like, I don't know, empower him so he can say no to drugs and stuff okay. like that. How was your rehab experience? Um... My rehab experience was a, you know, when you, I said this to my wife the other day, actually, I said to her, you know, when you, when you end up at a place, you're like, damn, this is exactly where I need to be. Yeah. Because I came from a world where I thought there was no help, man. Mm. You know, like I thought you, you in, you in it on your own and no one cares, but lucky enough, I kind of. I think, yeah, my mom made sure I, I hooked up with Brahu. Mm. Brahu then kind of got me connected with a certain infrastructure, of a support infrastructure wow. of people who kind of started speaking into my life. Mm. And rehab was a place I knew I was going to get help because people were brutally honest with me. They weren't mincing their words in terms of giving me feedback, yeah. you know. And that wasn't a... It wasn't a norm in my life, you mm. can imagine. Flying high, TKZ, no one's kind of telling you the truth mm. or, you know. And rehab was, was, was that kind of place for me. Did they make you do any crazy stuff like what, what uh, Trevor Oh, look, I mean, you call it crazy. Crazy is relative, you know. Mm. Uh, uh, mm. Uh, I'm sure it's, it's a certain, you know, there's, there's, there's different therapy, yeah. you know, uh, uh, techniques, uh, techniques mm. right? And I've never heard of that one. Mm. And yeah. What, what but techniques were you doing? Nah, I mean, we had normal group sessions. You know, you sit, you, you sit much like how we sit in now, and you kind of, people kind of, you know, the, 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 the counselor kind of uh, uh, throws questions at you to kind of get what's going on. Okay. You know, much like how you probing and you're asking me all of these things, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Then I didn't have the luxury of not answering, answering. the questions, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, kind of mind like now, you know. What's that? Kind of like now. Well, no, I'm kidding. Yeah, now I do have the luxury, you know, and look, and I respect the fact that, you know, some questions I do have to answer, but some are like, nah, man, it's we'll, we'll, you, we'll live, you know, yeah, if they're not yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, mm. but uh, yeah, it was a probing session and through the probing, 
the the method kind of hopes that they'll get to the bottom of stuff you know mm. and with me they did you know mm. in terms of what was going on and um here i am today man 20 years later you know do Ooh. you remember the the last night where you sat down you're like booga love kb can't do this That's shit it. anymore yeah, That's yeah. It. for sure well, well, when was for that sure night? look I, I just remember what i did i just remember coming back from the lady that bra you hooked me up with janine lewin she basically said okay we're checking you into rehab in two weeks on the first of november you're going in but it was two weeks you know before mm. but she says you've got to start now mm. you know and she says when you get home whatever alcohol whatever drugs or whatever you've got mm. you just got to throw that stuff down the drain wow. i remember that night kind of coming home and opening the cupboards and just getting rid of that stuff but it felt liberating to arrive at that place because here i was like um, taking charge right and uh, doing what i needed to do you know because if i didn't i'd be dead dude literally i'd be dead yeah i think i'd have been in jail or dead but i think i'd be dead mm. yeah one of the two and when you see like you know people that you grew up with that you started the industry with you know all passing away you know like people like mshoza brown dash that that makes you feel even more blessed isn't it? yeah dude i mean i've dodged a bullet you know um and 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 really it all boils down to the grace of god you know like if it wasn't because of the grace of god like i wouldn't be here you know yeah that that second chance and and really taking advantage and giving keep given the ability and the wherewithal to take advantage of that second chance is, is something that i don't take i don't take lightly is that why you got into ministry like being a pastor just to thank so god for I, the second chance no i think it's about understanding purpose okay right and then i was also sick and tired about hearing about god mm. and then saul has got his version of god mm. you've got your own i was like i want to know this god for myself yeah, yeah. like, like i want to know what it says in the bible mm. you know and that's why i went to bible school mm. it was never to become a pastor it was really just to understand because you know you, you you read the word you don't understand what's going on yeah so let me go to college and learn and it's, and it's undoubtedly one of the best decisions i've made in my life wow like um why are you saying from, that from a spiritual growth perspective i now understand who god is i now understand you know the thoughts that god thinks towards me you know gone are those days where i used to think god is some dude sitting in heaven waiting with a stick waiting to beat me down you know god is a god who loves me unconditionally who wants me to prosper who wants me to succeed who wants me you know there's a scripture in third john 2 it says beloved above all i pray that you prosper and are in health even as your soul prospers what that means is god is interested in us prospering in every single sphere of our lives he wants to, he wants us to prosper physically financially relationally, relationally psychologically like he just wants us to prosper that's it like and, and and he's given us the way with all to 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 do so he's given us the tools and we research it out we find it and we just put it into practice and it works you know yeah, yeah man and, and the thing is you see once we call it no yeah. this is this is this is just a dude having discovered an almighty god and now has a relationship with him right and then now obviously there's a responsibility with now having that kind of relationship having that kind of information mm. because i see myself as a beggar trying to tell other beggars where to get food because now i got the food hmm Study preaching so get under the food and you know study preaching so we don't have food i now walk down the road you know mickey d's is handing out free burgers i'm like dudes <laughs> free burgers <laughs> let's go let's go yeah and that's what my life is now it's mm. just like i'm just another beggar telling other beggars come to get food how different is uh, uh religion or you know what you're doing yeah, yeah. to music because in a sense like when you do music so i'm not doing religion mine mine is a, it's a relationship because okay. re religion is rules and regulations yes, yes yes and it's not about rules and regulations yes. you know the thing is i also don't want to get like too technical you yeah. know um and maybe let me just keep it at that it's not about rules and regulations it's yeah. about having a relationship yeah. you know with 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 god it's about um let me use this as an example you meet a chick yeah right 
you only know <laughs> what kind of a chick she is the closer you get to her 100%. when your relationship grows mm. you then understand mm. then you understand what the do's and the don'ts yeah. are you, you understand what I'm saying what ticks yeah. off what doesn't 100%, 100% mm. you know and it's and it's about a relationship but to answer your question you said what what's Now, it? I wanted to say like how is it like what you're doing let's not give it a name yeah similar to music because in music if i love booga love i might perceive you as a god whatever you mm-hmm. say is gospel mm-hmm. you know well we are created in the image of gods therefore we are gods but mm-hmm. with a small g right mm-hmm. so so and i guess us worshiping or idolizing it shows us that innately inherently we were created to worship oh okay. wow. we actually were created to worship but not the creation yeah the creator Oh, we focus too much on, on the, creation. the creation, and it's all about the creator. Yes, we should appreciate the creation because it's been created by the creator. Yeah. But we get stuck here. We're like, dude, you are amazing. You know? Yeah. I mean, there's a story in the Bible of Jesus coming into Bethlehem on a donkey. Huh. He's riding in on a donkey, and this is the week he was about to get crucified and everyone is shouting hosanna hosanna king of kings and the, you know when when kind of people use that as a sermon we are the donkeys hmm. that jesus is riding in on the gifts and blessings the, the, the gifts and talents that god has given you is all him oh. that he's given you you start expressing those talents you like the donkey you like yo these people are screaming for me like no it's him Sure. It's screaming for the one who's riding on top of you. Wow. That's what it's about. And the most important thing, let me connect this. You we have to connect the gift and the giver of the gift. That's when it all makes sense. When you start to think, yeah, I'm Mac G, I'm so we came up with this idea, you know, now our podcast is like, you know, you know, a uh, a uh, uh, blazing the charts. Mm, mm, no, mm. dude. It's gifts and talents that have been bestowed upon you by him. Hmm. And when you connect that you will start you know sustainability becomes inevitable when you don't connect that if what I, becomes inevitable you're going to mess it up yeah. you're going to abuse it because then it becomes about the chicks it becomes about the cars it becomes about the lifestyle all these frivolous things 100% whereas if you now if you now connect yourself to the giver of the gift this thing is sustainable yeah. it can become you think this is big yeah <laughs> it becomes like okay what do you want us to use it what do you want what do you want what, what do you want to use it for hmm. you know hectic bro it's amazing bro yeah <laughs> Damn. hey man i'm joining his church <laughs> where do you subscribe eh? yeah man. now you're good bro. You're, it, this makes sense man. yeah it's man. Not what they, you know, that's why you. they can never take it away let, from you let me tell you the easiest thing <laughs> you see what we need to understand is there's also forces of there's forces negative forces and and for you to deny the f- existence of negative dark forces for you to deny the existence you do that at your own peril hmm. you do that at your own peril you need to understand that there are forces that are against you that are of the dark world that don't want you to hear the stuff sure. that make it seem as if this relationship with god thing is unattainable it's not It's the most attainable thing because he's made it so easy. Hmm. It's the easiest thing to become a Christian. And it's not and the thing is even the word Christian, we created that word Christian. Mm. And and out of reverence, out of respect. Jesus didn't come to start Christianity. He came to facilitate the relationship between God and man. Mm. And then we called it things and started doing things. That's and out it. of reverence and out of respect. I think the intention there is good, but I think the core message gets lost. Because where there's good, there's evil as well. Hundred percent. So, so it's it's the easiest thing to have a relationship with God. All you have to do is step into His presence. Say, Lord, speak to me. Lord, I want to be in a relationship with you. Lord, help me. He's there. You take one step towards Him, He takes ten thousand towards you. That's how desperate He is to get into wow. a relationship with wow. you. Desperate to get into, like a father. Think you've got a child, right? Yeah. Think of how much you love that kid. So much, bro. Hmm? Yeah. Now that doesn't even compare. Yo, you can't even compare to the love he has for you. No way. You can't. Do you have him on WhatsApp? Bro? <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Yeah, bro. It's so easy, man. That's All we deep, have to do man. is just believe and receive, you know? And then what's your take on like ancestors? 
Matlozi, do you practice that or? So, I believe. I believe I believe in God. I believe in Jesus Christ, right? Yeah. And I believe the only way to God, right, is through Jesus, mm-hmm. right? I, I don't believe in talking uh, uh, through the dead. Yeah. So, 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 I have my own relationship with God. I don't believe talking through the dead to talk to God for me mm. because Jesus has created that access. Mm. And, and that's what I believe. That's what the word of God says. Don't WhatsApp me. Don't at me. Don't just, just don't. Yeah. yeah. That's my right, conviction. And, right, and, and, right. I, and, I, and, and the thing is, what's important, what's important is I can never enforce my conviction 100%. on you. 100%. I can't. 100%. No. We need to be able to sit across the table like this and vehemently disagree, mm. but still be able to be in a relationship. Yes. Do you understand what I'm saying? 100%, it's yeah. my strong conviction. You can't take that away from me. And or enforce the, it. And, and 100%. And if it's the opposite for you, mm. I've got to respect that. Mm. I've got to respect that. That's where we lose it. We, we just want to be right mm. at, at the sake of... Being right. You, for, for the sake of being right. Mm. And, 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 and losing out on relationships. Mm. You know, it's not about being right. If it's your conviction, okay, cool. It's your reality. Be, be about that. Yeah. Do that thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. just do it. Jinda machi bachi inde. Mudi muta tila libone, ifuta tila libone, whenever tila libone, you know? Mm. Yeah, man. Fuck, love it, man. Uh, before we go, we gotta play a game. I've got a game that I play. <laughs> I usually play with like hip hop stars. Okay. But I thought I'd switch it up today, so. Yeah. Because we never chill with like Kwaito stars. I mean, he's the king of Kwaito. He birthed it. Yeah, quite the God. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> For real. So we do a game, it's called. Don't you guys have a lady as part of the team? Yeah, that's for Mondays. Uh, Ghost Lady. But today's Monday. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. It's Woman's Day. She's got the off day. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now, man, that's for the shows that air on Monday. Oh, okay. On right. <laughs> You're a trailer, dog. Straight <laughs> Even up. Even the ghost lady. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the game we play is One Must Go. I'll give you two artists. And we tell me One Must Go. All right. And we, I wanted to do it quieter because we usually do hip hop, guys. All right, cool. But we're going to do quieter. Ndu Tukulo. One Must Go. Ndu. Ndu. I said it. Sure. I didn't stutter. <laughs> Trump is Alaska. 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 Who was part of Alaska, Kwanji? Alaska, yo, Abu. What's his name? Uh, it's not. P- no, Piquet. No one, Piquet, Piquet is the only guy uh, now from there who's Piquet. a bit active. Less my others late. Oh, let's yes, let's my others. Okay, cool. Boom shaka bongo muffin. Oh. You. Bongo muffin. Oh! I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Lebo Matosa dude, eh? yeah. like through and through, man. Like, yeah. like, like, yeah. So where is Lebo Matosa? Don't, don't mess. How big was Boomshack and Bongo bon Muffin at that time, bro? Well, we, we were talking off air about targets. Yes, right. Yes, yeah. yeah, they had an X on their back, you know. Yeah. When we were starting out, they were like the business, but, and we knew where we need to get to and surpass, you know. So they were our benchmark. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Much respect, much love. I mean, we've shared great moments. We've all done amazing things for the industry. Yeah. You know, we've all been seminal moments for, uh, for, for, for the industry. So, yeah, much respect to both mm. Bongo and, uh, and, uh, and Pumshaka, but Bongo got to go. Bongo. All right, Zola 7 Mendoza. Zola 7. Ah. Hey, that's a tough one. No, it's not. Not for him. <laughs> not for him, man. Easy. How's that easy? Why, why for is you, it bro? easy? Because I just said so. It's easy. <laughs> Yo, but Zola has got more hits. What did you say? Maybe for our generation. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, you guys are smoking something. (laughs) What are you smoking? (laughs) Zola got more hits. I mean, Mendoza's got Nkalakata. What else? No. 50 50. Yeah. Anyway, we're not having this argument. (laughs) Uh, Brown Dash, Mzambia. Yo, you're killing me. (laughs) Mzambia. (laughs) Mzambia, ne? (laughs) Okay. Okay. Arthur Mapapuzzi. Arthur. Ne? Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, and he's got too many tenders. He doesn't need to stay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brenda Fassi, Levin Matosa. You. Yeah. I know you can't do that. Yeah, ne? No. That's blasphemy. No, 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 no. Sacrilege. <laughs> Sacrilege, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Loves blasphemy, this guy. <laughs> yeah, I know. That one, I, I tried to. I was like, should I, should I? That's too much. Sacrilege. Uh, too much, bro. Sure, you can't, eh? No, no, you can't. Sure. Ever again. Ne? <laughs> Uh, this one should be easy. Mshoza, show me. Show me. Yeah, no. I thought as much. 
Kavela, thank you so much, Mr. Booger Dude. Love, man. How's the family? Good. Yeah, Stronger yeah. than ever, man. Yeah, blessed. I'm a blessed man. How many kids you got now? Two. Two. Mm. Oh, yeah, I'm working on the second one. That's good. Are you married? No, no, not yet. Are you getting married? Yeah, I'm planning on to. Okay. How long have you been with her for? Uh, how long have I been with her? For a while. <laughs> seven years, seven years. Eh? Seven years. So what kind of chicks you like? Mm, big bums. <laughs> Reverse I was trying to be him, yeah, but he it does. went over his head, you know? Don't be honest with you. Reverse on time. <laughs> I wanted to ask you before you leave, bro. What happened to you becoming a Springbok player? Hey, dude. <sighs> it was all a dream. <laughs> it was all a dream. And then he, I guess, you know, uh, parting shot. We always ask people, what do you want to be? What do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to be? The question we should be asking is, what are you willing to sacrifice? Because mm. it's one thing going, you want to be a Springbok player, but mm. do you understand the sacrifices? Mm. Wow, man. Mm. Yo, oh, you everyone right, can be, I want to be this. I want to be this. I want to be Everybody this. wants to be Everybody famous. Everybody wants to be something. Everybody but are you willing famous, to sacrifice? But you know, when you're fame, when you're famous, you lose all your pri- privacy. It's gone. Yeah. They've sacrificed. Mm. What are you willing to sacrifice? Yo. If you're willing to sacrifice it, by all means. So back to the question. Springbok rugby player. Ah, Joe. I got to uh, Technicon. You know, I went from being the, one of the biggest guys in the school mm. to literally the becoming smallest, yeah. tiny. And I uh, played maybe half a season on those the bench. Africanas are huge, those Africanas bro. are big, man. Yeah. And I wasn't willing to sacrifice. I yeah. mean, that's the honest truth, right? Yeah. But then music came along. I was willing to sacrifice everything. Yeah. And I did. Yeah. And to the best. And you now, could. you know, yeah. here we are. Where we at now? Are we working on an album? What's happening? Yeah, man. I'd love to... Um, uh, uh, I think sonically where the things are at now it's kind of come back nicely into our pocket oh yeah shit what do you think about yeah. my piano bro sick nah mm. nah sick it is quiet though, though. Lines, it is, quiet it's quiet though, though. Mm. it's quiet though through and through yeah. you know and I think the guys just want to feel special and they are special they're making some nice you know nice 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 beats um, and yeah I'm going to be dropping something soon I'm doing something with uh, uh, Kutwan with the crook mm, nice, um, nice. he's yeah I'm featuring on something he's done and uh, I'd love to do like a 10th final project because wow, it'll be my 10th album wow. and then then I'm out of here that's it can I do the, your interest yeah yeah sweet mm-hmm. done in that castle <laughs> <laughs> last piano song you listen to who you vibing with uh, last piano song I listened to oh, does it even count as piano I yeah. mean I was listening to M- MFR Souls yes it does Love You Tonight oh is that a piano track beautiful yeah, is it really yes I mean come on guys what is it Did you, you guys don't know what you verse? want yeah cheesy killed it there hey. what's he saying there He's just saying <laughs> yeah, it's all there's, bad. Na- there's nothing happening He's there right? wow. this. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a score. Beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. I mean, yeah, that song is beautiful, man. Yeah. Uh anyway. Obviously you love the usual Kabza, Pori. Yeah, yeah. Scorpion have you heard Kings. Them uh n- maybe I have. I'm not sure. Must not sure. I must say I'm not too clued up with the names. Mm. I know the tracks. I mean obviously something so it was quite prevalent, Kabza. MFR Souls. Um, who else? If a young cat does a sample, like uses one of your lyrics, would you like sue them and get ro- like someone says? Ah, but tiki tiki. But it's owned by the label, remember? Oh. The masters. And I mean, they, 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 you listen to the radio now. That's that's all you hear, right? Mm. True. Mm. So that that horse has bolted. Mm-hmm. And you just take it as a. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Uh, in closing, bro, we always ask everyone that we interview. What do you want to be remembered as, man, when it's all Jeez, said and done? Jeez, you know, that's what a question, especially in light of the passing of Shauna Ferguson and just listening to what everybody, everybody has been saying about him, you know? Yeah. And I posted on Instagram, I said, you know, I'm not going to regret the times that it did kind of cross my heart and my mind to hook up with you. Mm. And I didn't. But mm. what I will focus on, which is to answer your question, is and and what I'd like to be remembered for, you know, is is a love for a love for Jesus, love mm. for my wife, love for my children, and love for people. Wow. Like we like to at least Barry, I will tell you nothing about, you know. Mm. And yeah, I got a, I got a lot of work to do, <laughs> um, you know. But it's all part of growth. Yeah. Uh, 
thank you so much. Put good luck for coming Sweet through, man. man. Thank I you. You do a lot of interviews, you. bro. Don't you get tired like when people ask so you about I haven't, the drugs? I haven't really though. Eh? It's only I mean lately, I, I've just recently done another one now. Um, With who? The weekend. Who's uh, the weekend? The weekend. You are my machida, baby. It's pearly knaves. Ah, it doesn't count. That's not an interview, chief. What is it? I don't know. <laughs> it's a pilot. <laughs> Uh, anyway, <laughs> they're my homies. But anyway, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I haven't been doing a lot of interviews. Eh? Yeah. Like for real, I think I haven't said like this in years. But I'm sure you get sick and tired because they ask the same shit. The drugs. Yeah, they. I mean, you know, the thing is, I guess it's Im- it's always important to say stuff. I mean, you ask me very difficult questions. Yeah, you know. Uh, you know about my you know the woman abuse piece yeah, 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 you know yeah, yeah. Mm. i think it's always important to even as much as i've spoken about it uh to continue owning that oh, story you know guess, and because there's some people who maybe never, never seen, seen me own heard, it yeah, you know yeah yeah um and and i don't think i've ever had an opportunity to actually talk about it maybe on a public platform yeah, you know yeah um and it's rife right now bro Yo, it's GBB crazy is bro crazy man yeah. It's crazy, brother. You know, it's like, uh, it's embarrassing. Mm. And it becomes difficult because people always look out for, you know, and I say this with so much, I I say this so loosely, with people who seem to be leaders Mm. to say something. It becomes so difficult when you know you're just as guilty. Yeah, yeah. And you're raising a girl child. That's true. But I have to I have to be honest with my daughter. Yeah. You know, and being honest is and and owning your stuff I really believe is a is a is a is a direction because the denial is just gonna you know perpetuate the nonsense, right? Yeah. She looks like she's gonna be a superstar. She's got her own YouTube channel, eh? <laughs> no, not yet. Oh, not yet. Not yet. She thinks she does. She's on Insta, but she thinks she's on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Hi right, man, we are here podcast. Shut up, fit. Thank hola, you so much, hola. man. Appreciate it, man. Oh. What's happening? Thank you so much, Chillers, for the continued support. Always remember, make sure you subscribe and you like. And also, if you like, you can become a subscriber. And yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yo, what is happening? Shout out for your continued support on Podcast and Chill. Make sure you subscribe and like. They subscribe and they like. Right? <laughs> oh, that one. All right. Yo, what's happening? Shout out to. Nah, fuck. Let's go again. Uh, paint me there, nah. To paint me. Yo, what is happening? Shout out. Thank you guys so much for the support. And always remember to subscribe and like. And you can also become a member and subscribe to Patreon and, you know, throw the, the coins a bit. All right. Peace. Love you all so much. Last one? Yeah. Yo, thank you guys so much for your fucking continued support. Please remember to subscribe, like, and do all those things. Become a member, a patron if you want to bless us a bit and, you know, throw the coins that make them dance on the podcast. Peace. Love you so much. <laughs>